Hey, welcome to Watch and Waiting on the Lord. Today is uh, Friday, um, September, I believe it's the 17th, but I'm not sure. 17th, and uh, I have quite a few messages today, but uh, my first message is a message uh, of love to my Jewish friends. So, I beg you to please listen to this, because it's a good message for you. Um, what else am I going to talk about? So I'll give that first, and then I'm going to I'm going to read some about four chapters uh, of the Bible of the New and Old, and um, I saw this the other day, and I just had to repeat it, and well, kind of make it in my own way, but it's about, uh, I'll just give you the title, Tarot, Magic, Spells, or God, which would you choose? It's, it's quite interesting, it's quite simple, and just very quick, and it will make you think. Okay, so how do I start this? Okay, I have stuff kind of all over the place here, so I write stuff down. I have like Word document, uh, it's in more than one place too, so. Okay, so a message of love to my Jewish friends. So I don't really have news today, because um, I want to say these things. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world. I, I'll, I'll just give you an instance of something I heard. You know, President Xi went to San Francisco they cleaned up the streets and they put up Chinese flags of which people were tearing those down today or maybe it was even yesterday but um, you know what I heard I heard people were you know all these protests for you know stop the the occupation and stuff like that um, I heard that like the protests in the US are getting so bad they're trying to stop the economy just like in Israel remember all those excuse me remember all those protests and stuff like that that kills your economy okay um that people were i don't know if it was on san i don't know what bridge it was in california but it was in california where the ideology is really bad um that people were parking their own cars they were parking their cars that they owned and taking their keys and throwing them in the ocean is that not the the definition of a debased mind so i don't know they'll just come and they'll take those cars away so but uh, you can only imagine that this is going to get worse so so here i go so if you're jewish and come across this video i'm making um i'm asking you not to skip this please Maybe you think you've heard the Christian message before um, or more than once and didn't like it nor believed it. But at least give me a chance to show you I'm not a prosperity gospel teacher, replicator, or some other insane denomination that holds no truth. That doesn't stick to their truth. In fact, I'm here to tell you the truth. I don't listen to others because I study scripture on my own from the text and that's the difference when you decide to go and read the text yourself and study them yourself you're gonna come across a lot of truth not to say that you won't delve into other people's opinions because you have to start learning uh, what I have to say will save your life if you only believe me so if any time in history now is not the last years you're supposed to listen to me. You should listen to me today. And take a look around. Have you ever read... The, so I wanted to make this for a while. I say to the Jews, have you ever read Matthew 24 in the New Testament or Luke 21, Mark 13? They're all similar. Take a look around the world. And I'm going to read Matthew 24. Part of it. Earthquakes insane weather anomalies like I can see right here it's plus six Celsius where I live right now it should be at least minus six to minus ten 
it, it's consistently warm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was 20 Celsius tomorrow. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Insane weather anomalies that in no attempt a scientist to put forth a cause will amount to anything. Um, do you know that there are 19 simultaneous eruptions happening right now? Not little minor ones, but, you know, more medium. And obviously you look at Iceland, you look at other places that have had a blown. Um, take a look at the politics. I'm watching people challenge each other to fights. Brawls in, in parliaments. Um, a lot of fighting. And it's just everywhere. There's infighting everywhere. And uh, rumors of huge wars and actual wars. Communist leaders... Um, so they've encroached on all Western society, okay, F pretty much. Um, and that, that was their goal of the communists, to, to infiltrate the West. And Generation Z is heading towards the communistic train. They are with Antichrist protests, and they're like demons. They're demonic, okay? What they're doing is demonic. They don't know it, but... There are dozens of volcanoes. There are dozens. There's like 90 of them. 19 are simultaneously erupting. World instability. When the apostles asked Jesus on the Mount of Olives, what would be the signs of the end? He willingly gave us in a detailed roadmap. He gave us a detailed roadmap. And that's what I'm going to read to you. If you're a Jew, why, don't, why not listen? Because your texts aren't saying much about what's happening right now, right? although it, it does still tell a lot. He said first, do not be deceived. Never has there been a deception uh, like now. Take a look, you can see it on the news, you can see it, whether it's political, war, it's everywhere. So I say go read Matthew 24, uh, and I ask you to read, open up, Read uh, the King James Version or the New King James Version. I rep recommend those ones. Matthew 24 and Luke 21, my Jewish friend. The Old Testament, I'm going to read it in a sec. The Old Testament's beautiful and prophetic. Um, that's, it doesn't tell us this. Uh, so what does that say? I haven't seen a single person make this video yet compelling the Jews. I want to know why you, why you don't believe it. Jesus himself was Jewish. I say this because of any time to say it, it's now. Look around. Millions every single day are protesting against Israel because of what Hamas did. Listen, there's a war. I know there's a war. I hate death. They have to get those Hamas guys because you know what will happen if they don't? Say they say, okay, we'll have a ceasefire. They're, they will regroup and they'll come for another attack. Do you doubt me? So I don't like war and people dying, but ask yourself, why aren't they protesting about a thousand soldier deaths per day? That's just soldier deaths in the Ukraine. So you hear like a thousand Russian soldiers died and on average for those two years, it was a thousand Ukrainian soldiers dying per day. So where are those protests? So you know it's demonic at that point. Um, why aren't they protesting the Sudan, Darfur? Those protesters, most are demonic and will do anything. And it's like a party to them. So I saw, I read an article. It's basically a party to them. Do these people work? Like, what are they even doing? Pardon me a sec. I have to take breaks in my voice and uh, eat from my stomach. I'm going to read it at the end of what I wrote here. I have read the rest of uh, scripture from the Old Testament about Israel being saved in Zechariah 10, 12, 13, 14. It says the house, God will open up his eyes on the house of David and Judah, but uh, only one third of Israel will survive. 
have you read uh, Second Timothy about the way people will be in the end times? So there's another one that you should read that will tell you, and you tell me, so I'm going to read them all, and you tell me if that's the way people are right now. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of it. Boasters, proud, unloving, backbiters, violent, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So I'm going to read Matthew a little bit of Matthew 24, and then I'm going to read to you something that, that I wanted to read to you. I really want to read because I've seen videos of people in, going to Israel and showing them the forbidden passage, which is Isaiah 53. Um, my question is, why be ignorant and willingly ignore one of Isaiah's prophecies? If you understand it, it should hit you hard, and I've seen it hit others hard. In a good way, though, I'm not a professional when it comes to comparing your scriptures and your books. Um, but I know for certain that many parts of, I don't know if it's your Talmud, your, I don't know what the names of the other books are, but a lot of your stuff is taken out. I think of the Old Testament. I've seen it done. Comparisons to the point where a Christian had to go over all those points and show them the missing texts, and they were blown away. I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I would have to be learning for at least 20 years to do that. Um, okay, so, so you're being fooled by not having these texts that have purposely been taken out of the Bible away from your eyes. So, I'm going to read, and then I'm going to have to go back to this. There's, um, I'm going to read you Matthew 24. Just give me a second here. I have difficulty swallowing, so. <clears throat> Jesus predicts, this is Matthew 24, Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And as his disciples came up to him, showing, uh, to show him the buildings of the temple, and Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Was it 70 AD, 40 years after Jesus' death? So, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, what will, what will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus said to them, take heed that nobody deceives you. Do you agree with me that we're in a time of incomparable deception? For many will come in my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, not George Soros either, but he's certainly part of it. Um, famines we know, pestilence we know, earthquakes. And that includes everything else that's happening. That's volcanoes, that's weather. A weather is a pestilence. Then they'll deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. So they're persecuting all around the world now, okay? Just because it isn't happening to its full effect in Western society, but it is already, though. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake, and then many will be offended. Does it appear that many are offended right now? We're in a time of offense, cancellation, 
I'm offended by you, so we're gonna cancel you. Uh, we'll betray one another and we'll be hate and we'll hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. There haven't been there there are so many false prophets you can't count them. And because lawlessness is there lawlessness right now? Yes. Will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Um, and let those who are in Judea flee, flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go to take anything out of his home. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and are nursing babies in those days. And pray your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For there will be a great tribulation, so as is not seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. Would be saved. But for the elect sake, the people who believe in God, <clears throat> those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, there's the Christ, or there, don't believe it, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. I admit myself that there are many things that could easily, you know, like I'll see them and then I'll have to go back to scripture in my mind, even go back to scripture to make sure, so I'm not deceived. Always stay in this word. Um, they will, so it says, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. That's Jesus saying that. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, don't go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, don't believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's going to come in the heavens. Every single eye will see him. You, I'm in Canada. You could be in China. We're both going to see the same thing. Uh, forever the carcasses, the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. So those things have to happen first. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. And he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one heaven, uh, from one into heaven to the other. So, so learn this parable for the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, okay? It doesn't say when you see two of these things. It says when you see all of these things. So all these things are here for the first time in history. Um, know it is near, even at the doors. Jesus Christ is at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So, the generation that sees these things happening, we are the generation. This generation will not pass away that we're living in right now. That's it. No one, it doesn't mean people aren't going to die. It just means it's like a generation, and it's arguable when this began, but heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So I'm just going to stop there. All the craziness of the world that you see is is Matthew 24, what I just read. So that's a scripture that Jesus gave. That's the Olivet Discourse. I'm going to read you a second one here, which is a little bit more telling of the way people are going to be in this time. Again, my Jewish friends, do you agree with this passage from Paul in 2 Timothy 3, perilous times and perilous men? Pardon me.
There's war everywhere. Everyone's set up. There's nuclear bombs set in all the nuclear armed nations are threatening each other in some way or another. Can you imagine for where we are right now what will happen from now till the end of the year? What will be added to what has already happened? How about a year? Second Timothy 3 but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. So do you see people on Facebook, people loving um, themselves, narcissists? I have to emphasize, there's a lot of them because of certain ways are growing up now in certain generations, being brought up in certain ways without God. Their, their idol is their electronics. Is there TikTok? Is there whatever it is, like video games, whatever it is. <clears throat> I'm not saying, you know, some things, those things are bad in themselves. To love yourself is. Uh, lovers of themselves. I'm not saying video games or doing things are bad in itself, but living by them is. Boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without so, so gossipers, people talking uh, behind your back, <clears throat> without self-control, brutal, despisers of good things, traitors, headstrong, haughty, proud, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. For of this sort uh, are those who creep into households and make captive, captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Um, they resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapproving, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further. Further foolishness will be manifest to everyone. As uh, So there was, there was talking about something different there, but but if you carefully follow my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, and love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, so they're just talking in general. That's talking about Paul, but um Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. All. In one way or another. Uh, and uh, But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. I hope I'm helping you. I hope I reach a Jewish person. I hope I reach anyone. Um, pardon me, I'm going to take a, a big sip of water here. And I'm going to read something else too. But I'm going to read Isaiah 53 right now for you. I would, I, that's the one I wanted to read to you. The sin-bearing Messiah. So remember, this is NKJV. I like New King James Version. I've read both versions. I like the New King James Version because it cleans up some of the, you know, thou and it just makes it more, it makes it easier for, for someone who, who wants to understand quicker, I find. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up, this is about Jesus, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root at a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. 
And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And like sheep have gone and we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He has taken our sins. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked. There's a lot of prophecy in this. Those he died with the two thieves, but with the rich at his death. Joseph of Arimathea came and got him. He was a rich man. Because he had done no violence, nor were there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It didn't really please him. He didn't have... No one else could bear those sins except for Jesus, and he died for us. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercession, inter, intercession for the transgressors. So the Jews think that they have to wait for Elijah to come. It's not going to be Elijah. It was Elijah in the spirit, which was John the Baptist. That's what they have missed. And um, so you're going to go. You're going to be going astray to the very end if you don't listen to my message. Um, so that's Isaiah 53. Okay, so that's it for that. That's my message, what I wanted to say about, about the Jews. Um, you know, certainly it's God's will for the Jews to be saved, right? So I'm going to go to this, and then I'm going to read something in Hebrews 6. Tarot, magic, spells, or God. Pardon me a sec. Whenever you see me in these videos, I get worse the more I talk for two reasons, because of my throat and because of my stomach. I don't know why. I guess it agitates my stomach when I speak. I get severe gastritis in my stomach, so I got to eat and I got to put stuff on my stomach. That's why I do this. Okay, so I heard this just, okay, so it wasn't just yesterday, it was like two days ago, and I have to repeat it. It's crazy when you think about it. Narrow is the way to salvation, and wide is the path of destruction to the truth. So narrow is the way to the truth. If you stay in the truth, you stay in the truth. You believe in God, and you stay in that truth, then you'll find the narrow way, and you'll find salvation. Imagine for a second that you can erase everything in your life and set, um, just imagine this, and set, back, set yourself back to 19 years old. You have two choices in front of you. Since you were young, you've been taught about God. I'm just giving you. Just imagine this. You've been taught about God or you grew up hearing about God because let's face it, we all have in the Western world. Romans 1 states that no human being has an excuse for knowing God exists, for not knowing, 
by the creation itself. So all of us who can look at the sky, can feel love, can eat, can sleep, all those things, we have no excuse. It's a miracle in itself. Um, so consider those, those things. You're back to 19 years old and you just picture you've heard about God. I'm not going to say now you're presented with a choice. You're presented with either witchcraft, like tarot, spells, psychic reading, Ouija boards, whatever all those magic is, or God. I don't need to investigate this because I already know the answer. The answers to life, uh, if you wanted to know the answers to life, you wanted to know what was beyond, you're serious about it, you want to know, you know, in most cases, what would you choose? And you know what it is? People, people will choose witchcraft. You have two choices. You want to know that people will choose witchcraft, tarot, psychic readings. But on the other hand, all you have to do is ask God in a genuine manner, God, are you real? And if you're real, can you present yourself to me? Can you show me some proof so I can go on it? And, and uh, you know what? When you ask God things and you're not genuine about something, I don't believe he's going to show himself to you unless that's his will. But um, think about it. People would rather choose the devil, and that's what happened in the garden, right? That's what happened. Not man, but it was Eve who was tricked. I'm not saying anything about woman, but it, but it was. Um, God, are you real, right? You know, you choose a path of hell versus salvation and, and eternal life. Now, the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. This is the most common misconception in Christianity, or one of them. God won't answer and give you anything you want. So that's what the prosperity is doing right now, the gospel. All these false people, they, they don't have salvation. They don't have truth. They think that if you give money to them then then and you tithe and do that then god will give you 10 times back as much speak into existence uh, law of attraction type stuff i say no if it's in god's will he will um if it's in accordance with his will he will and i'm sure there are many prayers that you you ask that he will answer Seems like uh, the most logical choice, finding out if God exists. But that's not what people do. If he truly exists, don't you want to know? If no, what's the matter with you? When you find out he's real, because people are afraid to come to the light, because people would rather be, in, be evil, because their deeds are evil. I forget, I can't quote that, but I know it. When you find out that he's real, then real wisdom has begun. Not worldly wisdom. It can only be found in the New and the Old Testament. I'm going to read you one more thing. Take a little break here. Um, it's interesting. And uh, it sure begs a lot of uh, debate. But I think it's pretty clear to me. You know, you hear someone say a verse. or you Sorry, you hear a verse out of the Bible. If it says it in the Bible, it has to be true. So, so we'll see. I'll read it in a second. It's Hebrews 6. So, I've read this before, but I just happen to be reading this part of the Bible now. Can you lose your salvation? I'm not going to argue, I'm not going to debate, 
just going to read to you and I'm going to leave this video off. I'm going to read the passage before it and go into it. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we do... Uh, and this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible. Remember that word, it's impossible. For those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again, to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it's cultivated receives blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it's rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. So when you go out in a field and you find things that you find briars and, and thorns, you take them up and you burn them because they're useless. Anyways, I'm not going to debate about that. To me, that's pretty straightforward. Could it be? I'm going to stop there. Anyways, thanks for watching this. Um, and uh, God bless. Yeah, you know, I like giving the news and stuff like that, but I also like talking like this to give you the the truth of the gospel i'm not looking for views i'm not looking for subscribers at one point i i cared about that and uh i remember when i was the rapture the rapture i remember i could have got a lot more subscribers if i kept going on in that manner and kept doing that but i wanted to face the truth of what i see there is a rapture. Um, I won't get into that either, but it's just when is the rapture going to happen? And uh, so what if people differ, right? Just just get your theology right otherwise with everything else. That's how I see it. Uh, and I was in that spot and doesn't mean we're perfect, right? So anyways, God bless.